Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are doing well. Market's slowing down a little bit, so take a moment, pull your hands off the keyboard, and listen to my friend here, Todd Butterfield from Wyckoff. First things first, Todd, how are you? How are things over in your neck of the woods? It seems the weather's about 50 different places. Mardi Gras is nice and warm in the Northeast, as cold as can be, but how are you, my friend? We've had some pretty good days here. Weather's not too bad, so I'm sure Mardi Gras will be all right for everybody. I don't drink too much, so won't be much for me. I spent hey. a lot of time at my desk. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Well, with that being said, speaking of hot things here, it seems BTC is starting to light up a little bit. We're just a hair around the 25,000 level here. But last time we were talking with you, it was around the 21 area there. And it seems you've killed it overall, my friend. Would you like to go a little bit more in depth about that trade idea and how now it's come to an amazing fruition overall? Yeah, definitely. Last time I was on with Stephen, I was looking for a little bit of pullback in stocks and uh, Crypto, I was looking for a backup, uh, a Wyckoff backup on our charts. So let me show, uh, let me show that first. This is uh, the SPY chart that I show. Uh, I think the last time I was on was, uh, what was I, around the 8th or 9th? I was looking for really a pullback below the lows. I was wanting something down around 400. As you can see, we did get oversold down here at the bottom. I don't have a green dot there. We was right at 38.6, but I did do some buying of 406 and change on the SPY ETF. Again, I give that to our Discord. I give that, I give a lot of that stuff out to Twitter, uh, YouTube, TikTok, et cetera. So, you know, that worked for three days. We're back here now. I got small losses. Uh, I don't mind this. It kind of looks like a little bit of an ABC down for me. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't have any issue. I think stocks still could try to dig in here. I don't have a strong buy signal, so I don't have, heavy positions, but I do have some positions. But then with that in mind, I go to the Bitcoin chart. That's where I've kind of had the big run here. This has got the Wyckoff markings on it. I've been trading this real time really since the, the selling climax. So mm -hmm. we had the jump that I talked about probably on here before. I did sell 22, uh, 650, I think the exact number was. I was looking for a backup. We did get that. I repurchased 21, 550. I think that's a backup. Out of a backup, you usually get, you know, the the best, strongest markup. We have prices been marking up well. We did have that quick sell-off last night that gave us yesterday's late red bar. Mm -hmm. uh, my technometer never did get down to oversold. Uh, I jumped on it before it got to oversold, which was a smart thing to do. But and I and I did get a sell at the exact high yesterday. Technometer for me re reached 50. I didn't take the sell because again, I think. This, if this is a markup phase, you don't want to sell the first overbought reading. So we're still sitting here long from 21,550. We're 24,330 here. Uh, Ethereum, the same type of setup on Ethereum. I'm long that at 1496. Let me bring up, uh, I think I got this one marked the way I want. Yeah. This is a little shorter term, but the same type of deal. Here we had a spring of the dotted line. A lot of times why coffeeans will buy springs of uptrends. So we've established an uptrend. This is definitely a spring of that level. I actually bought it three days early because I thought that minor spring might be it. We did a little healthier spring later. You can see at the bottom, oversold technometers. Again, we went to overbought yesterday, but Ethereum's acting pretty good today. So again, I'm still long, a little bit nervous because uh, yesterday's high could have been important. We might do a big flat here. But uh, for now, I'm long and strong and see what happens. You know, Todd, that's an important thing. I don't want you to give away the full thing because I want people to go over to Wyckoff to see what you guys are going. But would you take a moment to explain the difference in the Wyckoff method between a, a backup, a spring backup, and just how that little bit of a section kind of give them a teaser on uh, why it actually really is important to understand how that is leading us into that next leg up? I mean, what happens is you have a jump, which is, uh, you know, a, a strong price movement with volume out of a trading range showing that this was all accumulation because this was preliminary support, selling climax, automatic rally, secondary test. That stops a down move. Then you go through accumulation. A lot of times you'll wedge, volume will fall off. That's exactly what happened. I talked before on here, this is where I got really strong setups. Mm -hmm. I bought 1183, I believe it was. And again, sold up here, two different positions that we had. But then this is a jump. Then you look for a low volume pullback to what was previous resistance. So that gives you the backup. And then also on this little 
little reaccumulation, we actually did then spring all these levels, which you go down below those, think everybody were make everybody think we're falling apart, catch sell stops on long positions, et cetera. So I also threw in, you know, that that was really also a short term spring. Mm -hmm. So whether it's a spring or a backup, it's still is showing us some type of rally potential. And you see at the bottom, we went from green oversold. I didn't put the red dot over here. We did get the red dot sell. I mentioned that on TikTok Live. But, uh, you know, we are at overbought level. So yesterday's high could have been important. Again, I don't think it was because this whole pattern plays out. We're starting a good markup phase here. And again, you don't want to sell. You don't want to sell an overbought oversold, oversold oscillator coming out of a, uh, you know, a base or a trading range. Oscillators like that work the best in trading ranges. Absolutely. If we're trending higher, you might want a 52 technometer to stop it and maybe a 40 buy. And again, on Bitcoin, we only got down to about 41 on the technometer. 38 was a buy. So that's kind of what looks like maybe we're starting an uptrend. This thing maybe feels a little bit like 2019 when we had the big rally. <laughs> Actually, my technometers gave me about 12 buys back to back with no sells from like 4,000 to 14,000. Then at 13 and change, it gave me a sell and we uh, sold hodls and we sold trading positions. So I'm hoping we're starting up trends here where buys on this technometer on the lower right gets you into these positions and then just keep riding, uh, you know, ride uh, rips up and, and maybe uh, take some profits and try to buy some dips. So, Todd, that brings a question overall, too, as we get into uh, the summer season here. Do you think we're going to start to see a little bit of a seasonality aspect on both uh, ETH and BTC as we start to see more travel, more spending, and people being okay with utilizing crypto as a method of uh, purchase and acceptance for purchase? Do you think we'll see more demand into the summer? You know, I'm not really good on cycles. I don't study that enough. I mean, I know there is that definitely on the crypto Uh you know, I would what, sell May and go away, different things. And I, I just, I don't trade cycles enough to comment. I don't think for me, it can add enough value for me to, uh, to want to do it. You know, I think that's something important too, is knowing that, hey, this is what I'm really good at with working in that market and sticking with it. I've had a couple people lately that sadly they decided to oversize in a position and they blew up their account of that. Would you mind giving a, from your experience, would you mind giving a couple comments on how someone can recover mentally from blowing up their account that was uh, just oversized and they did the wrong thing? Um, you just got to stay with good principles and and I, I was on an interview last night with Arcane Bear on YouTube, mm -hmm. and I didn't really get to mention it, but I, I guess for me, I wanted to say when things are really, you know, when Bitcoin's at 60,000, everyone's bullish and it seems easy, you know, money's flowing. So I might, hey, I might go out and, you know, some gentleman that gives trades, I might go ahead and spend a hundred bucks to get what he's looking at, or I might spend more at Elliott Wave. Uh, and I end up getting so much information that I don't stick with the basics. So usually when I get slapped around a little bit, I get narrow focus. I go back to what I do. I don't pay attention to any outlying information. I don't, I do my Elliott wave. I don't look at anyone else's Elliott waves and I go right back to kicking ass again. So for me, I just, I'm comfortable with what I do and I need to stay focused on that because it happens over and over. In bear markets, you know, I pull back, I get quiet, I go back to basics, and then I end up killing it for a while. And then I don't know if you get lazy, you know, at the highs, not really lazy, but you get content. Mm -hmm. and then money's flowing. And you're like, oh, this guy charges a thousand dollars for this. So I might just go ahead and pay for that and see if he's got any ideas. And that, that probably clouds a picture for me. Hmm. It's a little bit of information overload. And I know myself, I've, I've had that as well. I'm sure you remember back in the day, you could basically sign up for any promoters thing and, oh my God, they're talking about this, that, and the other and get a run on it. But it seems you get too much noise in it and it's uh, it's a distraction from the true blue price action on that. So Todd, a question for people that are wanting to really nail down the bits, really start to say, Hey, you know, this is going to be 2023. We're two months in into this. I need to find and work with a system. How can they work with Wyckoff, work with yourself and figure out how to uh, to really start navigating the market in a professional sense? I mean, WyckoffSMI.com is the original institute started by Mr. Wyckoff. 
I took the course in 82, took over the Institute. I mean, I'm a registered investment advisor. I'm not really, I'm not going to say I'm a teacher. I took it over because I was kind of the obvious choice. I spent 50 grand on some software to better what they offered. So uh, YCOPSMI.com, we got a course I paid about 1400 for back in 82. I sell it now for a thousand. It's basically online. There is a 560 page book that goes with it, but I've got a beginner's course for 300, 350. LearnCrypto.io is just a sister company that I started dealing strictly with crypto. I give away a lot of free stuff in there. If you log in and look at my different groups, I throw a lot of value in there for free. So, uh, you know, log in at LearnCrypto.io and make an account. Uh, the real, you know, where you can really get alpha is patreon.com slash learn crypto. That's $40 a month. You get my trades, my stops, take profit, you know, charts. Nick is a gentleman that helps me in there. He's an unbelievable fundamentalist, which is something I do zero of. <laughs> Anything you ask him fundamentally, he's got the answer. Does a lot of staking, farming. Picks the smaller caps. I mean, he wrote BNB from 22 all the way up to the highs. Uh, big in FRM, Zen, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So Nick's in there too. Him and I are giving trades, posting charts, answer questions, et cetera. So that's, that's where it's really at, $40 a month. I like it. I like it overall. And uh, do you guys have any big projects coming up for the future for 2023? Uh, my biggest project is I'm headed to uh, New York Monday to meet a uh, large hedge fund owner out of London. So I'm not sure where that's going to head, but uh, a little bit excited about that. And him and I otherwise just, you know, trying to find, he's trying to find those gems. It could be, you know, the 10 baggers on the way up here or bigger. And uh, I normally stay more in the large caps because I manage crypto money. So uh, cryptopcg.com is a little bit of information. I manage crypto assets by trading API. Mm -hmm. uh, so I can't withdraw or transfer. I can only trade view manage. And then I manage stock accounts at Charles Schwab. So I help you open an account at Schwab. You give me advisory uh, access and I uh, trade stocks there. I love it. I love it. You've got mind, to I want to show a couple of charts that have some Wyckoff markings. Yes. Yes. I think when I was on with, with Stephen last, I mentioned, uh, O-R-L-Y was doing a backup, mm -hmm. O'Reilly. That was right here, I'm going to say, when him and I were talking at 787 or so. I just had a quick $90 up to new highs. You know, that, again, jump on a backup. And not a lot of back here that I could sink my teeth into. But this here, the OP went to new lows. Price was holding higher. That's showing the OP is intraday volume on a five-minute basis. A ton of selling came in. Uh, during this time frame, and you can see it didn't affect price at all. And then our OP, which was showing actually volume got climactic on these points. And then boom, we jump, we back up, and then we're off to the races. So that's one that's done it. Uh, Iridium is one I posted on Twitter and then my mm -hmm. pro traders. This has been one hits big up last two days. I mean, it's been unbelievable coming out of I mean, here we are today at 64.50. We're on the highs of the day. Same type of thing, jump and backups, and then really another jump and backup. The green dots are oversold technometers. It really got you back in. Mm -hmm. The last one was a little bit high, but this pullback, you know, it wasn't even probably about 0.35 or something. So a nice little constructive pullback, but no volume. And then here we are, green bar again. So that's kind of classic Wyckoff. Another one... Uh, that I own for uh, some of my managed accounts, Cisco. Same type of thing on Cisco. Top resistance here is really coming off the automatic rally. That's where I placed this. So we did jump that and back up. And obviously you've got another line of resistance obviously here from this up thrust that stopped us for a little bit. But here we are, you know, kind of jumped that uh, yesterday and today holding in. So Cisco looks like is one that probably has got uh, their earnings turning around and uh, continue to work higher. I like it. I like it. A lot of opportunity out there. And I've noticed lately within the flow as well that there seems to be more of those uh, low volume pullbacks than normal coming through. I've been seeing that coming into the market and I've 
you know what? I've been taking every advantage I can when I see it. As a matter of fact, it's O'Reilly's, Microsoft, Apple, or any of those, those low volume pullbacks seem to be uh, in play when it comes to the market now. So I love it. There's All been right. a lot of those. And then the smaller cap crypto, a lot of them did the same thing. They had their springs and backups and low volume sell offs into the buy there last week. And you know, they performed well so far. And Bitcoin at 24.3, I mean, yesterday is 25.3. Uh, it's shown some unbelievable uh, performance here with NASDAQ not acting that well. I mean, I tweeted uh, yesterday, I think it was, that you had high correlation between NASDAQ and Bitcoin, and Bitcoin's left a little bit of that in the dust with uh, the last, last week's outperformance. So I don't know. I, I, again, I'm still long Bitcoin, Ethereum, some other small positions. Uh, it looks like they can go higher as long as we don't get a nasty sell-off late today and, and negative news for the weekend. Someone doesn't get drunk at Mardi Gras and decide to fat finger it. Steven, I'm talking to you, buddy, out there. I love it. I love it. All right, Todd, uh, if people want to find you on social media, how can they get a hold of you? What's your Twitter handle? I mean, Twitter, my main one's probably Wyckoff on crypto. I also have Wyckoff on stocks. I also have Learn Crypto Show. So any three of those, but the, the biggest followed one is Wyckoff on crypto. Uh, if, again, if you're only strictly stocks, you want to probably go to Wyckoff on stocks. I'm on TikTok, Instagram. Facebook. Most everything's under Wyckoff SMI or Learn Crypto. I love it. You're doing better than me. I still don't have an Instagram or a TikTok. So ladies and gents, he's got me beat on that aspect of it. You know, I tell you the TikTok to grab on the phone and do a 60 second or less video. I get a lot of views on them. And if you want to know what I'm doing, you know, 30 seconds, you can probably know where I stand. And people like that. I mean, I just started heavy here really in the last month or so on more on TikTok. Huh. And you can share that very easily, you know, across all social media. So that's why I'm saying I give a lot of updates. People know where I'm, I'm uh, trading in a glass trading room. So I love it. I love it. Transparency is key, especially in this market with everything that's been going on. So oh, yeah. I love it. Todd, thank you very much for dropping some great information, some great symbols and some great thought points. Ladies and gents, please go check out my friend Todd there at Wyckoff. Uh, all the relevant links will be in the description below. And I look forward to talking with you again on the next one. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Happy Mardi Gras. Happy Mardi Gras.